Hey man, all this gangster music. I like it. Okay. Right. But I'm just saying, we got <laughs> we got shit to do. We got shit to do, man. We gotta get serious. You right, bro. You right. You right. You right. <laughs> what the teacher say when she come back in the classroom? Hey, get back on task. <laughs> <laughs> J-O-N Yes sir I think it's about that time For me to let these people know the black market is open yeah. Oh, you got lipstick on your teeth Okay, thank you I, I got you Thanks for letting me know um, Dang, how long has it been there? I, don't, I think you just did it Because okay. it wasn't there previously Okay, thanks you for not having me look crazy on camera I would never have you look some crazy people Some people don't like to do that I should have just let it ride. No. Like, you saw the girl the best thing on that tape. <laughs> that would have been a bad No, nah, because the women in the comments wouldn't let me have it. He could have mm -hmm. told her she had lipstick. Thank but you. But I don't know how to. What's the protocol for stuff like that? That? Just like that. <gasps> oh my God, you have a lipstick on your teeth. That's what I would rather somebody tell me than let me walk around with lipstick on my teeth. Oh. Okay. I personally prefer that. All right, fuck it. See, we men, we don't know if you don't wipe that shit off, it's just gonna stay. <laughs> we thought that you could eventually, like, talk it off, but no. it will stay. Not red lipstick. That would have oh. been on here this whole interview. Oh. Well, I gotta catch you up on what's been going on. Okay. On previous episodes of The Black Market. We have had all kinds of people come through here selling all kinds of exotic animals, mm -hmm. uh, snowsuits, boots, college applications, um, watches, ice cream, desserts, mm. all types of exotic blunts and mm. lighters, tequila, mm -hmm. everything that you can imagine, we've tried to find at least one in the market that was black owned or at least minority. Yeah. And here you are today with another successful black owned business. Selling so, cocktails. I want you to introduce yourself to the people of the black market, introduce your business, and let them know what you got going on. All right, what's up, black market? I am Brittany Michelle. I hey, am the, Brittany. Hey, Carlos. What's up, Brittany? <laughs> I am the CEO and founder of Bar Friendly Mobile. We are a mobile cocktail service, full service. We pride ourselves on professionalism, great cocktails, and creating everlasting memories. So our whole thing is, our whole motto is turning strangers into friends one cocktail at a time, so. Oh, so let me ask you this. Were you always the friend that would pull up with the liquor? Always, like, since day one. Oh. Always, since I got my bartender license and I was 20. Now I'm saying, like, even in your civilian life, did you, man, call Britain, and then you pull up and you just got the liquor? I mean, I was always the one that pulled up and made the drink. Somebody oh. made Somebody may provide the liquor, because oh. I'm the woman, I like to come to the events and the liquor be there. Right. But I was always the one they called to make the liquor, make the drinks. Okay. So you got some cocktails that yes. you made. They yes. look real exotic and expensive. What you got over here? Okay, so a lot of my drinks are fresh, um, homemade. I probably, we like to just make our, a lot of our mixers in-house. So this is actually tequila. Um, blended peach and rosemary sim simple syrup okay. topped with raspberries just to cool it down to like add some frozen raspberries just to add a chill to it. Right. So I figure I'm a Georgia peach. I'm on the 85 South show. Might as well, you know, bring my peach cocktail. That's what I was trying to do there. Right. But it's good. Which one of yours? Um, I'm gonna drink. I'm gonna drink this one. Okay. They the same though. All right. I'm just saying because. I'm gonna drink that I would. One. I thought you was gonna take the one in the glass so you could show people, as we do this, how to drink like that. You know what I'm saying? I can like, do that. I can do that. Yeah, no, take... neither one of them have been 
like drink that up. So. Okay. I will. So this is how I hold my martini glasses. Okay. And you shouldn't have a straw most of the time. I don't. I don't think you should have a straw in martini glasses. But yeah. See. See. Okay. So give me the basic rundown of the business. What? What? When you say mobile bartender service, what is that? Okay. So we pull up to any event where liquor is served. So we now have a actual mobile bar. So we pull up. It's like it's on wheels. Um, we can change the branding. So I've been here my whole life. So what I've realized that a lot of people in Atlanta love to add a little taste of luxury to make them feel like, you know, celebrities. You got hookah. Event. We don't have hookah. Oh, I was about to say, <laughs> oh, you pulling up with the drink and the hookah? No, I stay in my lane. I'm a, I'm a cocktail girl. I'm a cocktail girl. I don't pull up with the hookah. But now, if you want to do a little partnership, we can do that. I I got about two or three people who will set that hookah we up. We could do that. I mean, most of the events that I work, there's hookah there. That's but, what I'm saying. That yeah. hookah has it's, it's like we're in Saudi Arabia or something. <laughs> in but it's crazy because the first my first job as a bartender was at Mint Lounge, which was an Ethiopian ran lounge, and this was like. 2014 or it something. It was so many pretty women with big foreheads in there. <laughs> they were pretty women there. Them African but women be that, having them foreheads. Remember Max? Yes. yes. That, that was my first, first bartending job, and that was the first time I ever even seen hookah. And this was before Atlanta got hit to hookah. You used to only could go to the African spots to get it. So I felt like it was a little more pure than like the hookah itself. Shout out to the Africans for bringing their hookah to Atlanta. Yeah, shout out to the day. It's everywhere now. You ain't even gotta be African to have I hookah, know. but yes. That's dope. So but. what inspired you to do this or, you know, create this outlet? Um, I think it's because I was a bartender all of college. I, I attended Georgia State University. Um, and I, that's how I made my money in college. That's right. how I paid. I was on scholarship, but that's how I paid for my car. My house, my apartment was through bartending. I would work, I'm from the east side, I'm from Stone Mountain. Um, so I worked at all the east side clubs, prime time, obsession. Prime time? Yes, mama's prime time. <laughs> I used to be in that sling of drinks. So I, it kind of created, was created from that, just having such a long history of bartending, but yeah. I, I didn't really like the long hours, working till four o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the morning sometimes. So I started doing like liquor reps for New Amsterdam and Hennessy and things like that through college, brand ambassador type work. Right. And I just wanted to start my own business. I personally felt like I created um, or gathered a certain type of clientele just from being it, just in different, working different places in Atlanta. So pulling up and having my own business allowed me access, access to smaller private parties, right. which led to bigger parties, and here we are today with Barfriending. Let me ask you this, as a lady bartender. Okay. What's the top five drinks that a man should have at the crib? For a woman or for himself? For a woman. Because, um, like, the ladies going to show up. What's Give us five drinks, five good drinks that, that a man could keep at the crib. If she likes vodka, a lemon drop. A lemon drop vodka. Write these down. <laughs> um, we got confirmation over there. If she likes, everybody likes tequila. So margarita, if you want to add some spice to it, get a flavor, keep some pineapple there, some mango, strawberry margarita, that'll keep me at the house longer. Okay. She likes brown, I'd probably say, uh, old fashioned. I know some women that like old fashioned, just that if they like brown. You they, mean like a Jack Daniels type? Um, well, I would probably use like Bullet um, for the old fashions, but some of them, some women I know who prefer brown, like it, like with yeah. the bitters. Because those women who grew up around their granddaddy drink that Jack Daniels and that Johnny Walker and shit. Yeah, Johnny Walker a little too. Yeah, That's them country women like liquor with a first and a last name. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that may be for the country women. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'd say Paloma. Evan Williams and shit. Yeah. Evan yeah. Williams. That's, yeah. That brings back to college. Yeah. Make us mark. Son. Yeah, Come see, it's, all they look got we two got names. Yes. Paul, my son. <laughs> that sounds like your granddaddy best friend. <laughs> Paul, Paul, Mr. Paul, my son out here. I'd probably say a oh, nice rum punch. Um, you don't even have to be big into liquor to like a rum punch. A lot of the times the rum disguises 
is disguised in the mix of the ju of the juices. So a rum punch, and keep some champagne. A lot yeah. of women like prosecco, like some type of sparkling drink. Yeah, a little orange juice in there. Mm -hmm. Have yeah, a little, little mimosa. We got some gin. Turn up. She she lit at breakfast. Titty won't start slipping out. <laughs> Babe, shut up. Yeah, you already know. This vacation shit, though. It vacation. Well, when I go on vacation. But where can they find you? Where can they look you up and all this type of good stuff? How can they book you? How can they spend money with you? So we have a very detailed website. You can always spend money with us by reaching out to us on Bar Friending, um, on Instagram, Bar Friending, literally Bar Friend. You got merch, too? Oh, we do have merch. All right, bet. Barfriendingmobile.com, barfriending on Instagram, barfriending on Facebook. You can reach out. You, you can find us anywhere. We're really easy to find, and we always want your money. Robin, but you say you're going to drink this? Have, come and have some and give the people. Look, I got my taste tester. You okay. thought I wasn't going to bring her in. She's no, been eyeballing the drink that. the whole yes. time. <laughs> no, no. Look, Javier want one too. Can you make one for Javier? Yes, Javier, I'll make one for you. Give a round of drinks to all my little drink drinkers on here. I got y'all. I got y'all. I got some more. What you say? It's good. You like it? You can't even take that one. Okay. Oh shit! You know what that means. Mm -mm. You're no. gonna be toe up when you drink <laughs> that. As soon as you get about to the last sip. But honestly, so you should. So you be sitting down, then you get up and you be like, oh shit. <laughs> You shouldn't taste alcohol in good drinks. That's mm. what I always tell, tell people who ask for more alcohol. Once you start asking for more and once you start going over those ingredients, that's when you get too wavy. That's how you leave when yeah. we were talking about. A lot of people don't know when they too wavy. See? When you got to discuss everything you about to do with yourself before you do it. <laughs> Everybody who ever had a drink know that moment that I'm talking about. When you have to say, in your mind, before you can even verbalize, okay, get up. <laughs> and, and just uh, just get up and stand up. Don't do nothing else. <laughs> just make sure you get all the way up and just stand up and we'll take it from there. Then you have to go one, two, <laughs> three. Stand up and then you have to keep giving yourself directions. <laughs> See, if you are drinking a drink at a bar friending event, you won't feel like that. We, like I said, we have a lot of fresh ingredients, so we are hangover free. Now, if you start coming to the bar asking for shots, asking for more shots in your drink, then maybe. But if we make them how we make them, we're all about responsible drinking. And yep. that's part of the reason that people hire us. So you will leave your event not feeling fucked up. Uh-uh. I think people are going to want to do the opposite. I'm telling you. Well, I hope they don't. So you want to just get them good. No, they can feel great. You can still feel great. But, I mean, a part of my job as a bartender is to know when you over your limit. Right. Because I don't want you leaving here getting a car accident and then they find out you bought your drink from me. Oh. So if you in there and you and you like, look, I got a designated drive. I'm straight. Fuck me up. I mean, put the money in the tip jar then. They need a section for people who ain't driving. I bet that will turn the club back up. You know how the it's, club kind of fell off a little bit? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You go to the club, ain't no cars outside, <laughs> but the club packed. <laughs> they people should start doing that. Then we would probably have less DUIs and less fatalities on the road. Right. Hell yeah. That's hard. We'll look into that. Yeah. We may need to start that up. In Atlanta, too? Yeah. I mean, you know, they got little driving services, but we need some more urban shit where yeah. you don't have to do all that. We even okay. got, we got now, we have liquor services that bring the liquor to you. Shout out to Quick Lick. Quick Lick. They're back, the black That home. sounds. Quick Lick, they'll pull up. If you don't want to go to the bar, if you don't want to go out or go to the liquor store to pick, they'll bring it to you. They're like Uber right. for liquor. But I feel like as black people, we have a responsibility to even the ones who don't drink it, like just to keep the black spirit alive. You got to keep a little liquor at the house. You have to. Just a little liquor at the house. Yeah, well, you we got to keep that black tradition going. And if you follow Bar Friend, then we give them home, like teach you how to be an at-home bartender. So we give you cocktail recipes, let you know what you, what everybody should have in their home bar. So yeah. definitely. Now that's hard. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I need to pay attention to that. Yes, yeah, I got a bunch of free out. liquor at my house. You don't really get to pick. It's just this. All this shit was free. That's they gave me this. Put you something together. <laughs> I don't and have you don't no even plan. drink liquor. I don't. So you just got it for your guests? Yeah, because oh. I'm a good host. 
That's good. Yeah, I got But all. are they making their drinks or are you making it for them? I definitely am not making oh. you no drink. You, you got, got to pour your house? own trouble. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I don't have a bartender at the house, but now that I know we got mobile bartenders. Call me up. Hell yeah. So. We'll pull up. I bet. Well, we appreciate you stopping through the yes. black market and much love and success to you and all your Thank future you. endeavors. Thank you. Thank y'all so much for having me. Thank you.